You can get the life that you want by understanding dopamine. You can live a happier life by understanding dopamine. And I mean that sincerely. It's probably the biggest tool in your mental toolbox, understanding what makes you tick, what triggers reward sensation for you. We know enough about dopamine, probably as the mainstream now, thanks to guys like Andrew Huberman, who talk about it a lot, that we can probably start digging a little deeper. This video is going to give you the truth about dopamine, not just what you see on WebMD or some little short blurb. We're gonna dig a little deep, but we're gonna also understand how to manage the peaks of dopamine properly, and we're gonna understand how to really get more out of your dopamine hits so that you don't become so desensitized that you just feel worthless and unmotivated all the time. Let's dive in and let's learn. Down below this video, I popped a discount link for Apex Protein Snacks. It is a biltong company. So Apex Biltong is air-dried beef. They have amazing flavors. They have original, they have teriyaki, they have uh, chili, they have peri-peri. Really, really good flavors, all of them gluten-free. No weird ingredients, just straight up beef that's air dried. So it's better than jerky. Jerky is usually tough and rigid and kind of hard, whereas biltong is soft and it's really, you can chew it easily, it dissolves in your mouth, it's the way that it should be. And it's derived from like South African biltong where it really is done a lot. Like in South Africa, they create biltong and they air dry it for a couple of weeks and it's amazing stuff. Apex is as close to that authentic South African biltong that you can truly get. So if you need like a protein snack when you're on the road or you want a way to start the day or you want it literally for lunch or in a salad, you've got to check these guys out. I'm serious. The flavors are unreal. So that link is down below. That code and link will save you some cashola and it's going to change how you eat. Check them out down below. So dopamine is not just a chemical messenger. Yes, it does do that. It communicates, it sends a signal from neuron to neuron in a chemical fashion. But it also affects the body. It is also considered a neurohormone. And that's what people forget, is that although dopamine is the simple reward system, like something feels good, we get reward, we feel good, we want to do it again, right? It, it forms habit, literally forms habit. But it also forms habit and feeling in our body. Okay, because it's involved in the fight or flight response, it is technically considered what's called a catecholamine, just like adrenaline, just like epinephrine. It's involved in that fight or flight process, meaning dopamine allows for more blood flow to get to our brain, allows for more blood flow to go to our muscles, and vasoconstriction in the areas we don't need. The reason that I mention this is that it's not just a circuit that's happening in our brain. There's feedback that happens in our body too, which makes dopamine hits all the more habit forming. In the brain, you get this euphoric effect at a micro level and in some cases at a huge, huge level whenever you get a dopamine hit. Now I'll use this basic example. You eat a delicious chocolate muffin. You take a bite of it and you can just feel your brain saying thank you and being lit up, right? It feels so good. Very simple analogy, but then the next day, it's like you need that chocolate muffin again. But there's even an anticipatory effect. You even produce dopamine in anticipation of these things. So now you walk into the coffee shop and you smell the chocolate muffin, you see it, and you start producing dopamine and you start getting, start getting a hit of it before you even take the bite of the chocolate muffin. And then when you do take the bite of the chocolate muffin, it feels good, but maybe not as good as it did yesterday. And we obviously know this analogy to be true with a lot of recreational drugs. That's why it can be so problematic. What people don't understand about dopamine is that dopamine is constantly measuring reward with immediate past behavior. So if that immediate past behavior is something that you worked hard for, i.e. hard exercise, something kind of difficult, and then you get a dopamine hit from it, there is sort of a balance in the force, so to speak, where your reward is associated with something that you had to work for. So therefore, it reinstills mentally and physically that you need to do hard things to achieve reward. There's a very obvious downside to this too, right? We live in an era now where we can get concentrated hits of dopamine artificially or through just various somewhat artificial stimuli that trigger a huge dopamine hit without a lot of hard work. Social media, pornography, drugs, nicotine, 
right? We get dopamine hits that make our brain feel super good, but with very little actual work. This is, quote unquote, an imbalance in the force. Now, the larger the dopamine hit, the bigger the problem, right? So let's take recreational drugs for a second. If you get a very big dopamine hit from a recreational drug, that's obviously making you feel amazing. But the bigger the hit, the harder it is to match. Now, that's easy to understand, but what people don't often get is that these dopamine hits that we get from artificial stimuli or unnaturally large dopamine hits that we get from artificial stimuli, pornography, whatever, those, that desensitization, the need for more dopamine translates into other areas of our life too. That's not just like mental woo woo -y. oh, it's gonna translate into your life in this way. No, that is cold, hard, flippin' fact. So if you are succumbing to a bunch of like social media drama where you're getting a dopamine hit, you need that dopamine. And guess what, then it's time to eat. You're gonna have less ability to abstain because food isn't going to satisfy you as much. Because the dopamine receptor is not niched to the one category of life that you got the dopamine hit from. If you get a dopamine hit from a drug, then it's going to make it harder to get a dopamine hit from something like food. And it's gonna make it really flipping hard to get it from something that's not that pleasurable like exercise. Thus begins the downward spiral of motivation. Then, what do you know? The only way you can even feel satisfied is with the concentrated artificial stimuli or drug. And more of it, right? This is a serious issue that we face. Even something as simple as video games that seems kind of benign can be problematic because it is artificial stimuli that is coming at us at warp speed and then you stop playing and the cessation of it makes you crave because you've been getting this hit constantly so you need to get the hit from something else. So what do you do? You go eat or you go do something like look at pornography or you masturbate or whatever, right? It's constantly trying to find the same thing and it sounds kind of comical, but it's very, very, very real. Now let's talk about how to manage this. The first things we have to look at, we're gonna look at core things that are not the sexiest, but they're important. Okay, the sleep piece is super important. There was a powerful study that demonstrated that just one night of sleep desensitizes the D2 and D3 receptors significantly, just one night of sleep. Now what we have to look at is, Dopamine is sort of like a white noise too. If we constantly are bombarding, bombarding our body with dopamine hits, we become desensitized to it. So then occasionally if you like take a break, that white noise turns off and you become sensitive again, right? Now when you're sleeping, you remain sensitive. The dopamine receptors remain sensitive and they're sensitive to the signal. Now if you're not sleeping, it takes more to get yourself feeling good. In other words, if you're sleep deprived, it's gonna take more pornography or more drugs to get the same effect as if you were actually rested. The same thing applies with exercise, but exercise is very difficult. Now, please don't skip over this stuff because it's so important to learn this particular part. So even though exercise may not be pleasurable, the feeling after it is. So if you recognize the big feeling that you have after a workout, that is enough to trigger a dopamine response. Now, the downside is intense activity that is painful doesn't always give you the right reward. The reward needs to overshadow sort of the pain of the workout. So with this, if you're trying to build habit, workouts that feel good are better than workouts that are miserable. And we've seen this in the study that took a look even at yoga. It was actually improving dopamine sensitivity because the feeling they got after a workout was so good, even with a mild workout, that it helped their sensitivity in other areas as far as dopamine was concerned. Then we look at sunlight. This is interesting. This study was published in Progress in Neuropsychopharmacology and Biology Psychiatry. It's a mouthful. And they looked at sunlight. They found that 30 days of sunlight exposure, varying sunlight exposure, was associated with a dose-dependent increase in the sensitivity of D2 and D3 receptors. What that means is the amount of sunlight that people got was directly correlated in a dose-dependent fashion with the sensitivity of their dopamine receptors. More sunlight 
meant they were more sensitive and didn't need as much stimuli from other things. The best way to put this is if it's a cloudy day, you're gonna need a lot more, a lot more porn, a lot more social media, whatever, to get a dopamine hit. But if it's a sunny day, you won't need as much because you're more dopamine sensitive. And it's that literal, it's pretty crazy. So how can you manage things? There's two things you can do. You can manage the peaks, and this is attributable to like every aspect of life. You can manage your dopamine peaks, which we'll talk about, or you can dopamine fast, right? How you manage peaks, let's talk about this. The most important thing that you can do is start associating reward with smaller victories with a journey rather than the peak reward. Okay, a good example is money. If you set this goal to make a million dollars and when you reach a million dollars, you have this huge dopamine hit, you feel so amazing, that dopamine hit is going to be hard to ever replicate again. You're gonna to have to make $2 million to replicate that sensation. And then what happens when you hit 2 million? Then you gotta make 4 million. Then you gotta make 8 million. Then you gotta make 16 million. Next thing you know, you're completely throwing your moral compass to the wind as a means just to get a dopamine hit. Same kind of thing with drugs, right? Just one hit, okay? And then it just turns into this more and more and more. So the more you associate dopamine with these big, big, big rewards, the harder it is to manage that. So you gotta manage these peaks. So what you do is you look at the smaller peaks and that sometimes takes mindfulness, but even working out, Understanding the celebration that happens accomplishing a good set or a good round, a good part of a workout. I feel good with that, I recognize that, rather than only looking at the end result of a hard workout because that's going to be hard to replicate. Every time you have a big peak, you gotta match that peak or exceed it, otherwise you're not feeling as good. So recognize the small peaks so that you can manage it more effectively. The other side of the equation is reducing the stimuli. Now, this sounds funny, but let's take working out again as an example. It's one thing like, okay, I only want to work out when I feel good, okay? Uh, the temperature is not exactly right. Well, I need to have music going. And then we take this to the extreme. You've all known the person, I know you have, or you've been the person, because I know I've been that person, that flips through music while working out to get just the perfect song to motivate them just enough. That is a clear and classic definition of needing the proper stimuli because your dopamine hits are not adequate. So then in order to maximally lift or to do a good set of exercise, you need that music, but you don't just need music, you need that specific song, then you need it cranked up louder, then you need a shot of ammonia, then whatever, what, where do you draw the line? Then you need more pre-workout, right? You see where I'm going with this. So what you do is you manage these peaks by occasionally listening to something like Barry Manilow while deadlifting 600 pounds. Like you gotta do that kind of terrible stuff so that you're not just bombarding yourself with stimuli, getting huge dopamine hits. Because then your association with that hard set is associated with having all kinds of stimuli. So yes, purposely listen to Coldplay while you're doing something difficult in the gym. So you're managing these expectations as far as dopamine is concerned. You also have to reward and reinforce smaller behaviors on purpose, right? So like little teeny things that feel good, you need to recognize. Your kid gives you a hug, recognize the sensation and the dopamine hit that you get. What you're doing is you are connecting and creating a kinesthetic awareness with this dopamine high and low. Now, there is the other side of the equation which is called a dopamine fast. And there was a study published in Lifestyle Medicine that demonstrated that this is a significant way to manage dopamine. It's not BS, it's not woo-woo-y stuff. It is where you say, I am going to take a break from social media. It's the entire desensitization piece. If you are constantly bombarding your body with dopamine, your receptors are going to get desensitized to it and you're gonna need more to get them to even listen. If you're the obnoxious ex-boyfriend that's constantly calling the girlfriend, eventually she's just not gonna answer anymore, but when you stop calling her for two weeks and then you call her, she might answer, right? Same idea with dopamine. It's that simple. Put the phone down. Put the phone down from social media for five hours and watch how it impacts your appetite later in the day. It happens that fast and it happens that effectively. You need to make things difficult and you need to reset dopamine every now and then. Otherwise, you're constantly trying to climb this ladder to the point where you either have to go for high achievement to get the effect or you're an unmotivated, depressed person. It's that simple. I'll see you tomorrow.